Okay, again, so um, we call that Newton's second law has a rotational equivalent. Uh, and uh, remember, our torque, tau, is defined such that if r is the position vector uh, from the axis of rotation towards uh, a point where some force f is applied, then the torque is just the cross product of r cross f. Okay, now you may ask, of course, uh, remember our force is related to uh, another physical quantity, which is linear momentum. Uh, the question is, is there an, a rotational analog for linear momentum, which is, uh, wala naman sa aking nagsasabi na why not just define it as R cross um, P, where P is the linear momentum of the vector. So, for example, um, if this is uh, uh, the um, R cross F, the direction of the torque uh, uh, is the direction of the thumb. Now, I can define, uh, heuristically, I can define an uh, a rotational analog of my linear momentum, let's say that it's L, such that L is simply R cross P, where R here is the, again, from, um, if, if P is uh, the momentum of a particle, then R is the distance from an axis of rotation towards the direction of the of the particle. So uh, what I just did is to, um, ginaya ko lang yung R cross F, tinatan ko lang yung F ng P. Wala naman nagbabawal sa akin, gawin yan. Okay, so I can define R cross P as that. The question now is, so in a way, what I did is to um, the rotational analog of force is torque, and then the rotational analog of momentum is was defined as some angular momentum L. Now the question is, is this the correct definition of my angular momentum? Kasi ginawa ko lang namang R cross P. For the meantime, tanggapin muna natin yan. And we will show later that this is indeed the correct angular momentum expression. Okay, so again. Now, so let's define, um, uh, so similar to linear momentum, for angular momentum, uh, if uh, R is the position vector from the axis of rotation towards the direct uh, position of the particle, and V is the speed of the particle, uh, therefore P is just MP, where M is the mass of the particle, then the direction of the angular momentum is uh, uh, the thumb from R cross P. So, and the direction of the of the thumb is the direction of the angular momentum. So again, a cross product. So more formally, we can define an angular momentum for a single particle as this. Let me be the linear momentum of a particle. If R is the position of the particle with respect to an axis of rotation, and then the angular momentum L, L vector, is given by L, which is simply R cross P. Okay, again, this is just a definition based on the fact that I can do that. Okay? And Again, we will see later that this is indeed the correct definition of our, of our angular momentum. Okay, so the magnitude of the angular momentum is given by MBR sine phi. Again, just a recall, if A and B um, are two vectors, so let's say you have vector A here, and this is some vector B here, and phi is the angle um, between them taken from tail to tail, then uh, the magnitude of the cross product A cross B is simply magnitude yan is simply magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sign of the angle between them, which is phi. Okay? Now, similarly, we can also define that for the angular momentum R cross P. Uh, if R is the length of the lever arm and P is the momentum of the particle, which is just given by MB, then the magnitude of the angular momentum L is simply MB R sine phi, where M is the mass of the particle, B is the speed of the particle, R is the distance from the axis of rotation towards the particle, and phi is the angle between uh, R and uh, R vector and P vector. Okay, so so um, in a diagram, you can see that okay, this is a, a if this is a coordinate system that's defined from an axis of rotation, and then uh, and then this is a particle, and this is some velocity v. I, I can define my position vector is such that uh, it's from the axis of rotation towards the particle. And then the direction of the angular momentum, R, cross V, is now out of the paper. Again, since this is a cross product, the direction of the of the angular momentum is obtained using right-hand rule. Okay? Questions? May mga tanong ba? May tanong? Wala? Okay, wala. Okay, sige. Now, again, Angular momentum is the rotational equivalent or rotational analog of linear momentum. We define it that way. L is R cross P, where again, R is the um, point from the axis of rotation towards the, part, the position of the particle. And P is, of course, your usual linear momentum. So here are some remarks. Uh, the, as I said, angular momentum is the rotational analog of linear momentum. And then it has unit kilogram meters squared per second. Wala siyang specific name. 
unlike for example, work, which is in joules, similar to linear momentum, wala a specific name of unit ang angular momentum. So just write it as kilogram meter squared per second or um, kilogram, wait lang ha, let me do this, kilogram uh, meter squared per second squared um, times second, I can do that. So this is simply joule second. So in other books, uh, you can write the units of angular momentum as joule second. That's, that's fine. Uh, okay. And then, okay, so we can also define uh, the angular momentum of a rigid body as such. Kasi kanina, pinag-uusapan natin particle. Para naman pag rigid body. So for a rigid body with moment of inertia i that's rotating about its axis uh, uh, with some angular velocity omega, the angular momentum L is defined by L is i omega. Okay, important dito, is that the measurement of the moment of inertia is about the axis of rotation that we're considering. So for example, uh, if indeed don't mean a measure, so for example, um, uh, this is the, uh, for example, you have a rod, tapos ito yung axis of rotation niya, you need to calculate the, uh, the moment of inertia about this axis. Okay, hindi about this axis, about, about the center of mass, for example. If you need to uh, determine that uh, moment of inertia about us, an axis, ba kailangan nyo minsan gumamit ng, ng, uh, ng, uh, ng parallel axis theorem, for example. So, and again, that's an equation defining the, the moment of inertia, uh, sorry, the angular momentum of a rigid band, L is I omega. Okay? So, anong itsura niya? So, for example, if this is a rigid body, then, uh, and this, uh, it is rotating at this, uh, uh, at this, uh, at this axis here, so uh, the axis passes through this um, point here. Then the uh, the um, then the angular momentum. If this is uh, if omega is in the uh, is outward, therefore the rotation is counterclockwise. Then the direction of the angular momentum is also in the same direction as of the of the angular velocity. So in that case, L and omega are parallel. Okay. So here are some B marks. So um, first, L points in the same direction as omega. This is obvious because um, since I, uh, for now, we, will, we are treating the moment of inertia as a scalar. In general, it is not a scalar. <laughs> okay. Uh, L, L uh, and since I is positive, therefore, L and omega should be parallel to each other. Kasi parang nangyari lang, yung omega in is stretch more, in is squeeze more by some quantity I. Hence, the direction of L should be in the same direction as the direction of, of omega. Uh, similar to what we have here, so from here, um, since the rotation of the body is uh, clockwise, uh, sorry, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, then the direction of the angular velocity is out of the paper, uh, and therefore the direction of the angular momentum uh, relative to the center of mass, uh, sorry, relative to the axis of rotation is also out of the paper. So, yeah. Now, uh, speaking of, um, out of the paper and into the paper, I need to emphasize that our positive k hat direction is the out of the paper direction. And our negative k hat direction is into the paper dire direction. So for example, from the previous definition r cross p, r cross p, if the, um, if the direction of the thumb is out of the paper, um, since we are in a right-hand coordinate system, then um, the direction of the thumb is positive k hat. Uh, since we are, again, we are dealing with planar rotations here. So, wala, hindi tayo masyado makakita ng i hat or j hat dyan na uh, direction ng angular momentum. Okay? Laging positive k hat or negative k hat lang yan. Okay, so, um, similarly, r cross p into the paper, negative k hat. Ganun din sa i omega. Omi i omega, counterclockwise direction, positive k hat. Um, i omega, clockwise direction, negative k um, negative i omega. So this is a negative k hat, k hat into the paper. Okay? So again. Now again, the units of angular momentum is kilogram meters squared per second. And let's say for instance that the um, rigid body is um, rotating, of course, there, so therefore there's an i omega term here. There. At the same time, the center of mass, let's say it's translating. Paano pag translate at the same time, nag-rotate yung isang rigid body. Then, the total angular momentum of that rigid body is the sum of the, of the uh, angular momentum due to translation and the angular momentum due to rotation. So, he hence, um, if the speed of, or if the velocity of the center of mass of the particle is given by V, then the total angular momentum is R cross P, where P is equal to the mass of the particle times the speed of the 
or the velocity of the center of mass times i omega, where i um, or the rotation is taken at the center of mass. So you have L root total is r cross b plus i omega. May mga tanong ba? Questions so far? Questions? May tanong ba? Wala? Walang tanong? Wala? Okay, wala naman. Sige. Now, how do we relate the two expressions we have for L vector? So um, remember, we have two, two definitions here. We have two definitions given by, first, um, uh, we have R cross P and I omega. Ang tanong, are they equivalent? Of course, when you check the units, they're equivalent. Okay, um, there is uh, a way to to show this the equivalence. Um, what I will show um, in this uh, in this slide is just the heuristic way of showing that they are they are equivalent. Okay, um, ang gagawin natin, hati natin yung proof um, into two parts. The first one is we'll check the magnitude of uh, we'll check that the magnitudes of them are equal, uh, and then second we will check that uh, it makes sense that the directions of the two angular momentum that we're considering here are also the same. Okay, so for the for the magnitude, let's say um, let's start with a rigid body. So, for instance, remember a rigid body can be treated as um, as a quant uh, uh, as an object that's composed of different particles. So, so pwede mo isipin yung ibang particles yan. So, may mga particles ka dyan. And for some axis of rotation, I can define a position vector um, from the axis of rotation towards the the point on on the rigid body. So, let's say that some R. Okay, and then um, at each point, uh, this part, point particle embedded in this rigid body here has some linear velocity v. Okay, it has some linear velocity as shown in this diagram here. Okay, now what is the magnitude of L? This is simply i omega. But i here is the sum of all the moments of inertia of all the particles comprising the rigid body. So I can write this as summation over i of mi ri squared. And uh, this is just equal to summation of i mi ri squared times the angular velocity of the rigid body time omega. And then what I can do is I can write this as mi ri times ri omega. Okay? But what is ri omega? What is ri omega? So this is just, so ri is some, uh, position vector from the axis of rotation towards a particular particle of mass mi. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, yung ri omega, it pertains to the linear velocity of the particle. Remember, v is r omega, right? So, I can um, determine the tangential velocity of that particle vi in terms of the angular velocity omega of the rigid body. Because remember, and for the same rigid body, at any point in the rigid body, uh, the angular velocity is the same. Diba? So this is simply summation over i, mi, ri, vi, and therefore this is simply, uh, and here we have the sum of the individual uh, angular um, linear momenta uh, of, uh, of the linear momenta of this vector L here. So what we have shown here is we have shown that um, this L here is, the i omega definition and the mr or and the mrv sine phi definition they're equivalent at least in magnitude okay in magnitude they're equivalent what about direction so for the direction medyo mas madali siyang isipin kasi pwede mong isipin na um, if this rigid body is rotating with some angular velocity omega if it's rotating with some angular velocity omega then any point at any point on the on the rigid body it it moves with some um, angular velocity omega, which is uh, which is the same. And um, when you uh, so omega, so the direction of omega is parallel to the direction of i. And um, r cross p, which is out of the paper. So for example, here, if this is the velocity vi of the particle, then r cross v into the paper. Then the direction of one of the particles should also be parallel. To the direction of the angular momentum. And hence, um, and it's also the same for any other particle. So R cross P into the paper, R2 cross P2 into the paper as well, R3 cross P3 into the paper as well. And therefore, uh, the direction of the angular uh, of the angular velocity uh, is the same as the direction of R cross V. And hence, the direction of the omega in that case is also the same 
uh, as a direction obtained in the in the in the R cross P case. So ibig sabihin yung direction na nakuha mo sa R cross P ay same na dun sa direction na nakuha mo sa Iomega. And hence the directions are equivalent. Okay? So that's basically a heuristic argument to show that this is indeed these two definitions here are indeed equivalent. Okay? Again. So for a system of particles, this summation here can be converted into I omega. Pero um, a more formal way to define this is using uh, another, just check the supplementary discussion that I will be uploading. Okay, questions. May tanong ba rito? May tanong? Walang tanong? Wala? Wala? Okay, wala. 